If there exists a people fitted for colonization, it is the German. A great part of the world's commerce is in their hands. We require markets, or rather outlets, for the development of our commerce and our industries. We want breathing spaces, or rather reservoirs, for our overflow population. We are now a united and powerful nation. We want German colonies. At the dawn of the 20th century, land begotten via colonialism by the great European powers spanned over the globe. At the fore were the rivals of Ward, mighty Lady Britannia, and Madame Moraine. But of course, they weren't the only nations to beget a slice of the colonial pie. The Dutch maiden, Senior Hispania, took the slices as well. The nation, born of blood and iron, would as well take part in having an expansive colonial empire. The grave of this empire would as well be bought by her blood and iron. The origins of German colonial expansion are undoubtedly to be sought in the Hansa or Hanseatic League. In the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and finally the 17th century, timber, furs, metals, and such traded in the Baltic Sea, from such a league born of Hamburg and Lübeck, the Hanseatic. Its rise, seeing members of some 200 towns, a monopoly on the Baltic Sea, and foreign trading posts, its fall, by large Baltic powers trade independence, Dutch and English merchants competing in the sea, having the final meeting in the year 1669 thusly being the origin of Germany's colonial expansion. From commerce were derived the surest means of wealth and the development of a country, and that navigation and commerce are the staunchest pillars of a state since they assure the inhabitants, whether by seafaring or their industrial productiveness, both supplies and prosperity. The bestowing by Luther's accursor, or the Vauda Travel and the Great Elector, of Seymour primeval origins of German colonialism, the foremost being Charles V's Holy Roman Emperor and Spanish King, leasing lands in South America to the Euthanger family, but it would be ceded to the Wessler family, leading to Clan Venedig, a failed endeavor, being corrupt, dependent, and poor. The latter being Frederick Willem, the great elector Brandenburg, who despite earlier setbacks, would gain lands on the Gulf of Guinea. Following the elector's death, as well as Frederick I of Prussia, Frederick Willem I of Prussia would have to face his country's first experience in colonialism by the will of the sovereign, meet in a glorious end. We do not wish, nor can we colonize. We shall never possess a fleet like France. On the other hand, our workmen, our lawyers, our retired soldiers are not worth anything for colonization. Prussian's Gloria was indeed true. On January 18, 1871, the Dane, Austrian, and French had been maimed and beaten, and Keen is now with an empire. But the man responsible for the creation of such the German nation was not keen on colonialism, but the people's will and later Wilhelms was keen on the colonial endeavor, which was not hurt by manifesto, such as Bedarf Deutschland der Kolonien by Friedrich Fabry, long amounts of German immigration, and organizations such as the Deutscher Kolonial, led by the Prince of Verein Hohenlohe Langenburg himself. The years of or closely following the Berlin Conference, Prince Bismarck would say, My intention, in conformity with that of His Majesty, is to leave to the activity and the spirit of initiative of those among our fellow citizens who have given themselves to overseas commerce the entire responsibility of the foundation and material development of the colony. I intend to resort to the system of annexation of maritime provinces to the German Empire, not to that of giving letters of franchise equivalent to their English royal charters. I think that it would be wise to leave to the companies the care of the government, limiting ourselves to study the means of assuring to the Europeans the superiority by means of an opportune jurisdiction and in guaranteeing them every possible protection always on condition of not being obliged to keep garrisons. I think, moreover, that in every country acquired in such a manner, it would be sufficient to have a single representative of the imperial authority, who could be called a consul or resident, and whose duty would be to receive appeals. The question that might arise between traders would be examined before our maritime and commercial courts of Bremen, Hamburg, or elsewhere. Our intention is not first to create provinces to be administered, but so take under our protection colonial enterprises and to aid them during their development, whether against the tax of immediate neighbors or against the annoyances that might arise from European nations. In so doing, where such creations are unsuccessful, the empire will not lose much and the expense will not have been considerable. With Bismarck's long-awaited acquiescence, the drum is beating, Germany's old history of forgotten colonialism was about to pass, and the new about to reign. 
By the will of the Sovereign, people and relaxing Chancellor is about to manifest. Thus the concludes part one of Germania's Colonial Empire. Thank you very much for watching. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may the Lord bless you. Have a merry, merry Christmas. And as well, please check out my friends, Motor Republic and N11 Productions. That being said, good day.